Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. First of all, I'd like to show you some pictures and provoke you to think. Thinking, how would you prefer to have your CD stored? The first one, the second one. You know what? Same CGR station. How would you like to identify your plot? First one, the second one. Again, same CGR station. How would you prefer to register your data? First one, second one. Same CGR station. Which agronomic practice would you prefer? First, second, same CGR center. Where do you think is a safer place to work? First one, second one. Same CGR station. Okay, why am I showing these pictures? Because we would like to move from this to this. Because we believe that by doing that, we will reduce errors, increase staff morale, increase sustainability, increase heritability, and by consequence, we will be more effective, we will deliver better products. I'm sure you know that the technical aspect is not the biggest challenge. The solution is none. It's a matter of prioritization and cultural change. This is the topic of my presentation today. I will be presenting the initiatives that EIB is conducting, what has been achieved, challenges, and the next steps. My name is Gustavo Teixeira. I'm the Breeding Operation and Phenotyping Module Leader at Excellence in Breeding Platform. I have over 15 years experience in private sector, including Syngenta, John Deere, and other companies. What do we want to achieve? The desire is that breeding programs have the most effective and cost-efficient phenotypic process from field preparation to data collection, with a strong culture of delivery of quality data through continuous improvement, providing respect for all employees. You can read more about that on our website, Vision for CGR Breeding Program, that was one of the output from our annual meeting last, last year. Okay, what does it mean? It means that we need to have a good plotmanship, good agronomic practices, field preparation, pest control, etc. It, it means that we need to be effective and have cost-efficient process. It relates to mechanization, automation, data collection, access to service. It means that we need to have the culture of continuous improvement. Everybody, every day. We need to remove bottlenecks. We need to remove wastes. We need to focus on what really adds value to our clients. Of course, we need to do that with respect of all employees and the environment. We need to have a place where everybody wants to work. We need to lead by example. We need to have in mind that CGR is an example for farmers. We need to think in the sustainability of our stations. Okay, let me provide a background on how we started and we, it can give you an idea on where we are and where we want to go. Okay, EIB was launched in um, 2017. Initially, module four was only focusing on phenotyping. Vincent Vades was leading that, the initiatives. The goal at that time was that EIB would be a platform that would provide tools and service. With that in mind, Vincent organized some workshops on image analysis, quality, and nutritional trade. In July 2018, when I joined with a colleague, Steve Korok, in fact, we were brought to complement with operation component. So at that moment, we decided to, to change from phenotyping to breeding operation and phenotyping. The first thing we were asked to do was to assess the current status. That is why in October 2018, we developed a framework for that and started visiting some CGR NARS stations. From late 2018 until mid-2019, mid was basically assessing the current capacity. Q2 2019, EIB was asked to coordinate the development of improvement plans. I'm saying that because everything after July 2019 was based on that. And it was when we started delivering 
and it helped us also to plan better our activities. You can see that in, July, in, in August 2019, we organized for the Cassava and Nian Breeders visited Brazil, interacting with Embrapa, private companies. In November 2019, we organized our first uh, continuous improvement workshop. In Q3 uh, 2019, the Crop to End Hunger initiative was launched, a really good opportunity to support the implementation of the improvement plans. 2020 was basically based on improvement plans and, of course, based on our own long-term strategy that was defined based on the BPAT reports and our, on our own assessments. We focused on delivering engineering support. With, we started some phenotyping projects with support on irrigation and soil management. We also prioritized the effort to create on creating the culture of continuous improvement. Okay, what is the current status? I'd like to talk about this in two different aspects, the technical aspect and the organizational aspect. The technical aspect is what needs to be done, okay? To understand the current status of what, what needs to be done, I need to explain our assessment, okay? In our uh, assessment, we assess the capacity of each uh, station that we visit in, in five categories for an agronomic practice, seed processing, planting and harvest, phenotyping, and continuous improvement. Since uh, July 2019 until now, we visit 25 stations from NARS and CGIR. Each one of these 25 stations visited, re they received a report ranking the current status from marginal, to cutting edge. Okay, the tables uh, below illustrate the current status for or each category. As you can see, in average, from almost all categories, the CGIR stations were ranked from basic to good, with some exceptions of marginal and some exceptions of better. This helped us to define our uh, strategy or our um, high-level roadmap. This year, as I said, we initiated uh, the development of irrigation projects. Our vision is that by 2022, the key CGIR stations should have the proper irrigation infrastructure and capacity to manage irrigation. To, the, to do that, we hired an engineering company to design the irrigation system for seven CGR stations in Africa and with, with the proper uh, weather station and soil moisture probes. What were the challenges? First challenge, internal processes. It took almost eight months to have the engineering company hired. Another challenge, communication, scope definition. Too many people to be involved to define the scope of, the, of each one of, that, of these projects. How to mitigate? First, we'll need to involve procurement and legal team earlier in the process. We got also the commitment from CIMIT team to improve their own process. And we will be hiring the breeding operation mechanization specialists. They will be the key contact for these CAPEX projects. What are the next step? steps? We need to implement the infrastructure. Some will be with the crop to end hunger funds. We need to, to fill additional gaps, perhaps other projects. And we need to train staff. For that, we will organize the Breeding Operation Exchange Program. I will talk more about that later. And we will also continue publishing relevant materials in our EIB toolbox. Okay, other area that we understood should be important area to focus uh, is related to soil management. We have seen some degraded soil, some problems with field management. That's why we hired two consultants to support us on that, uh, Ray Whale and Lydia Gatteri. The plan for this year was to assess the, some stations and develop the soil management plan. However, of course, the, this project is delayed given the, the, the COVID situation. We couldn't do but at least we could do one station, which uh, is, it is help. We are in the process to delete, to find to the, the report, but it helped us to understand the 
the process to to improve, to process to deliver the the the, the to do this assessment. I mean, lessons learned, the challenges that we 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 faced again internal uh, process. Second, communication similar. This challenges here they are similar as the irrigation project. Okay, the next step, we need to coordinate the visits and implement the plan. Okay, the other area we put focus this year was the deployment of the culture of continuous improvement. We have the support from Theresa Heitman on that. Since last year, we trained approximately 75 CJR staff on lean methodologies nine projects and over 120 participants from ours on our continuous improvement website website webinar what were the challenges virtual training is definitely a challenge and also given the covid 19 situation the project uh, teams had difficulties to implement projects but even in this situation we can see good results for instance in erie where we have good examples of tools being applied in a daily base, culture of continuous improvement. How we hope to mitigate these challenges? We will need to reduce the size of groups we train, and we really need to focus on support practitioners. We need to focus on helping them deliver projects. What are the next steps? We work close with URI to create the organizational structure for continuous improvement. We need to take advantage of the momentum with them once we really got we got a really good engagement for an ERI team to help to create the structure. Here is our roadmap, the roadmap we are developing with ERI. As you can see, we hope to develop a sustainable continuous improvement system with ERI before we deploy that in other centers. Okay. Uh, other important area for us is phenotyping. Either phenotyping, field phenotyping, and lab phenotyping as, as well. Our plan is to create within the next two years the base for the future deployment. As I said, we have two big areas in phenotyping. Lab, quality, and nutritional, and field phenotyping, agronomic trades. Regarding uh, lab phenotypic quality nutritional trait, Aldo Rosales, he's helping us or he has been leading the initiatives. Our goal here is to have similar as high throughput genotyping, service for phenotyping. Our plan was uh, that we should have uh, the demand defined and we would start selecting vendors. And we are doing that now. We are in the process to, we have some the demand for a few crops, and we are in the process now to to define vendors, uh, discussing contract with them. Okay. What were the challenges that we faced? The biggest challenge was to understand the demand. We struggled to connect the demand or the the traits with product profiles. A lot of wish lists. Fine tune that was definitely one of the biggest challenge. And we decided after suffering a lot that we need also to reduce the scope. It starts slowly. We start to trying to cover too many crops, too many uh, regions, and we learned that we should reduce to facilitate our work. So the next step, we have um, start also conduct some vendors so we need to deliver that or sign the contract and we hope uh, that in the sooner next year we'll have some contract signed and we will deliver this uh, start sending some uh, samples and start working okay regarding the agronomic traits or field phenotyping our goal is to have an operation team or service provider equipped with proper device that could be a drone for instance with proper protocols and they would 
we, uh, by um, request or after a breeding team we request them to do the some analysis some trait to measure some trait they could go to the field generate that image upload that image in a third party company platform that would later send the result directly to the to the EBS of course with a fair price okay to do that uh, Vicent Vades is leading a project that we hired a company called hyphen to do a proof of concept in Igrisat for a few crops there with a few list of trades and we already have the protocols available in our toolbox challenges again internal process to seven months to six seven months to sign a contract with this company uh, regulations to fly drones as you know some regulations and we change and we are still facing issues on that area too so what are the next step um, we need to deliver this proof of concept we also need to develop an implementation plan considering other centers other crops other regions and of course we need to identify additional vendors partners to provide similar creating different different uh, protocols and growing in this area okay another area that we put uh, effort also this year was to support breeding programs to have the cost defined okay we need to think in costing on costing in on three different aspects first what are the costs per market segment cost per pipeline or more high level cost second what are the fixed and variable costs cost per region, cost per station, and the third one, cost per activity. In this sense, in cost per activity, we have um, two aspects. The need for simulation or to define opportunities to improve breeding processes. And we also have uh, the, the, the uh, cases, or especially programs that work with operate as a full cost recover like uh, Erie and, and Icrisat now and they are doing in this direction. In this case uh, they need to understand the full the cost per active because they charge the breeding programs based on each activity that they perform. Um, so in this case uh, we support we of course we 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 this we have a lot of interest to support them on that and we support Iri to fine tune the, their process a little bit and also support an sat and to to connect with Iri and to share their experience for the first case we have been working close with a uh, module one peter kodrak and also with support with eduardo Covarrubias to develop and also Jan the bunny also too of course to develop a simple template a simple template to, to to define the cost per market segment cost per pipeline and these we validated that that uh, the template with cement maze team we are fine-tuned just details that but the the, the, the template is, uh, is it's it's okay it's it's can can work for the two other cases, we are promoting the adoption of the University of Queensland 2. Okay, this one, the University of Queensland 2, you can find the access to download that on the on the EIB toolbox, and this other template, you will, it will be available soon. Okay, so what has been achieved that here? So, Bish and Lenny, they are providing really good support to the national partners. To adopt the University of Queensland too, and Carol Maze, Naro Maze, CRI Rice, they already used that tools and in, in, in their programs and the, the University of Queensland too in their programs and it's working well. Um, and they started now the process for Zimbabwe pro, Zimbabwe pro, program for Maze. Simit uh, validated the Excel template for the the high level um, cost per, per per market segment or pipelines and CIOT that is the crop improvement operation team um, from Nikrisat and IRS from Erie they shared experience and best practice to define the the cost the per activity okay 
challenges, different needs, different uh, operation modality. With it, it make, makes difficulty difficult to standardize. And it's not easy to to standardize to have just one template, just different needs, different operation modes, so create uh, not uh, easy aspect. Another, um, um, but we the, the next step, so we will continue promoting the adoption of these tools and we will uh, intensify our process to support programs to get the cost defined next year. Okay, so another initiative we uh, took uh, to change the current status was to support the adoption of digital devices, okay? Filling some gaps. Uh, we bought, uh, using the Crop 20 Hunger Fund, some digital device uh, and, and some supplies as well. Some were already delivered and some will be delivered soon, okay? Internal process again, one year to get this process. Uh, when we started this project, is when we couldn't still deliver the, the device. So, one year now, so we need to improve. And, and, and similar as others, so we will involve procurement. We go earlier in the process, we, we got more, we got the commitment from the CIMIC team to improve. In the next steps, first, uh, we uh, hope to deliver this project and start training people with the support from Module 5. Module 5 will coordinate the training. We start thinking also on second round, considering other devices, other type of uh, solutions, okay? The following year, we will also put some effort on other areas that we believe that would be important to have a high, uh, modern breeding operation. We will put effort in other areas such as seed processing, code rooms. We hope to start implementing some GPS. We, we hope to start, uh, we will start uh, the implementation of farm management systems and greenhouses and controlled environment. By doing these initiatives, we hope to move from the current, the current start from this to this, okay? As I said, these improvements are the technical aspect, but we also have the organizational aspect. That would be how to implement these things, okay? The current uh, organizational or, or scenario, as you know, we have two types of um, operation. We have centralized operation, like IRI and ICRISAT, and we have mo most of the breeding team, the, the centers operate as uh, managed by breeding teams, or part of that, or mix of that. In the centralized case, uh, there are they are more control on the cost component. They have dedicated staff or operations that facilitate improvement. Breeders focusing only on breeding. The SOPs are standardized across, um, across crops, across breeding projects, which of what will result in a better or in standard result. Remember from the beginning, these type of uh, things wouldn't happen, okay? Wouldn't occur, at least uh, would be a problem for all breeding, all, all programs in that station and should, it, should be treated for all. So this is the operation mode that we believe to, to be the most appropriate for CJR, and this uh, the one that we will we promote, we in the IB, we believe and we will it doesn't mean that we will not support others, of course, we will continue supporting, but we will always promote the decentralized operation, okay? So what is our vision, okay? We should have in our vision a regional operational team with head of operations. This is uh, at least uh, 
uh, I'm not really show, uh, uh, saying that this is what is going to happen. I'm saying that what would be our vision. You know? um, this regional operation team should be responsible for operational uh, in the region, for all crops within their specific region. And they would need to have their head of operation. Okay? So, how would EIB support that? How would be this, the scope in EIB in this case? So, remember from our EIB annual meeting last year, some of you may remember, some may, may remember from that when we presented that, the breeding operation and mechanization specialists. Okay? So, that this mechanization specialist, there would be a group of uh, operation and mechanization specialists that would work in, in a regional scope, support centers, and they will be connecting with our expert in different areas. For instance, Teresa Heitman from, for continuous improvement, Didier and Ray for soil management, Aldo and Vincent for phenotyping, uh, we also have a plan to hire irrigation experts and an expert to, for quality to help us to standardize SOPs. The idea is that this group of breeding operation and mechanization specialists with, would connect with the, the head of breeding, the head of, of uh, operations, head of breeding operations, supporting them to implement things. And of course, they would connect with uh, each other, okay? And would uh, that this is would create what we are calling it's the breeding operation alliance of excellence, okay? Okay, so we understand that we don't have this uh, structure, so. What happened is the, our capacity is limited. Okay, even though we, we still don't have this structure in place and maybe we'll never have that, but this structure, this part, we will continue to have. So these teams, they will be supporting in a regional base, but instead of having one person or two to discuss, to, to implement things within a regional, they will continue to work with many within the stations, perhaps working with six, five people within the same, in the same station instead of managing with one. So that would be much faster, much faster to implement things. As I said, this is our vision uh, and what we would appreciate to work. As I said again, it doesn't mean that we will have that but we will continue to have this part, this second part here, and we will, con we will implement this, and this will support on these things here, okay? Next year, we will start a program uh, that we call in the Breeding Operation and Exchange Program. We, the idea is to select, in partnership, of course, with the breeding programs, aligned with improvement plans, key operational staff. They will define key improvement projects, they will work on, the, on this specific project process that would be um, deployed or would be implemented. And the EIB will send this key operational staff to another center or to private companies that, in, that, they, that already have good process aligned with the process that they would be implementing. They will spend two, three weeks there working on that processes and at the end, they will present these processes, these, the, their projects, to each other, and they will learn it with each other, with them. Um, the, before they go to this, to this visit, to travel there, they will pass through this continue to continuous improvement training, they will learn, and they will have kind of uh, support from us later to implement uh, the, in the the projects, of course, based on 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 the the uh, the solution. It would, of course, it will depend on the solution that would be found. But of course, we will support them to implement. 
So this is the idea. I would like to thank you a lot for the, the to listen to me during this presentation and we are open for questions.